But you know, unless we actually start to come into this holy confidence, it's not an arrogance, but actually knows who he is and what we carry, then the world is missing out on what Jesus was so excited to see. He said, it's better that I go away because His Spirit was gonna come and live in us. And great, and the same works we, He did and greater works we do. That's how, it's, that's how it's supposed to be. You know, I, I love Jesus when He met the woman at the well. And He said, if you only knew who was talking to you, you'd ask for living water. You know, He was not arrogant. But he knew, he knew who he was. And he knew he had something to give her that was gonna change her life. You know what? I wanna put to you that the Holy Spirit is sending an awakening that is causing the sons and daughters of God to wake up and realize that it's no longer they who live, but actual Christ who lives in them. They're going to start believing, not just with a head knowledge, but with a heart reality that as he is, so am I in this world, which means it's a really good day for you. (laughs) You see, until we know what we look like, we can't have the confidence to manifest who he is. As a man thinks in his heart, so is he. If you think, well, I'm just a Christian, I've attended a few global awakening events, I, you know, I, I've heard about healing, I could give it a go, that's awesome. But it would be so much more awesome if you reckoned yourself dead, hallelujah, by the grace of God, alive to God in Christ, not by your works, but by His great goodness, and realize that today, It's no longer Catherine who lives, but Christ, the same Christ who walked the earth and healed all who came to him. Not a little bit of him, but him here now. We'll get there. James chapter one. Do you like the book of James? Apparently Luther didn't, but James, (laughs) James is awesome. James chapter one. I used to read this scripture and get condemned, but don't get condemned. Listen to this, I've got good news for you. But be doers of the word and not hearers only deceiving yourselves. For if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he's like a man observing his natural face in a mirror, for he observes himself, goes away and immediately forgets what kind of man he was. But he who looks into the perfect law of liberty and continues in it and is not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, this one will be blessed in what he does. I mean, I used to read that scripture and I'd I'd look at it like a measure. Am I a doer of the work? Well, I don't know if I'm doing all of the works all the time. I'll I'll just have to try harder. I wanna be blessed, but I can't really claim that I'm a doer of all the works right now. That's not at all what this scripture is saying. He's saying if you're not doing all the works of Jesus, if you're not doing all the things that the Bible says you can do, it's not because you need to try harder or that you're a bad person or you're you're a hypocrite or you're somehow lacking in something. It's because you've forgotten what you look like. You've looked in the mirror of his word And then walked away and thought, oh, I'm gonna get there one day. You've forgotten what you look like. But if you actually look in the mirror of His Word, and you know, the the Bible tells us in 2 Corinthians 3, (laughs) now the Lord is the Spirit, verse 17. And where the Spirit of the Lord, there is liberty. I just read that part for fun. But we all with unveiled face, beholding as in a mirror, the glory of the Lord are being transformed into the same image from glory to glory just as by the Spirit of the Lord. He is our mirror. When we look at Him, we discover what we look like. I mean, Dan shared it this afternoon, um, 2 Peter chapter one, that we have everything pertaining to life and godliness through the knowledge of Him. Yay. 
Oh, look, I tell you, that's so much happier than you're reacting to. Like, <laughs> everything I need, everything, like a banqueting table. And then he says, add to your faith virtue and virtue knowledge. And, not, and you go, oh, okay, yeah, I still gotta get it, still gotta get it, still gotta get it. But you know, what he's actually describing is like a banqueting table that he's laid out in front of you saying, taste this, have that, get up and eat this, take that too. And you know, and then he says, verse nine, can you all understand my accent? I, I hope so, just checking. I went into a shop in South Carolina and, and the, the man ran away because he couldn't understand me. And then this other lady, she said, honey, you're cute, but I can't understand a word you're saying. <laughs> well, dear, sorry. <laughs> okay, but you can read your Bible. If you don't understand, it's here in verse nine. <laughs> For he who lacks these things, Hmm. is short-sighted even to blindness and has forgotten that he was cleansed from his old sins. In other words, he says, if you're lacking any of the virtues of the nature of God, the fruits of the Spirit, the power of God, the character of God, if any of that is lacking in your everyday manifestation, it's not because you are an unrighteous bad person who needs to try harder, it's because it says it here, and it said it in James. It's because you've forgotten something. You know what you've forgotten? That you've been cleansed from your past sins, that he actually took away my old life and gave me his life in exchange. And that life is tangible. It's glistening light that you have to give away. It's the word of life, the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead now lives in you. And you now can say, such as I have, give I thee, hallelujah. This isn't feel good theology, it's just basic gospel 101 and the world is waiting and longing, groaning, wake up, we need Jesus and he lives in you. You know, amen, amen. She understands my accent. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Proverbs 28, one. The wicked flee when no one pursues, but the righteous are as bold as a lion. Hallelujah. That means they, their confidence isn't in themselves, but in the one who has made them clean. And righteousness doesn't come by your behavior. You see, the word of God is no longer for us who have been born again by the grace of God, being saved by grace through faith. The Bible is no longer a measure that we compare ourselves to, but a mirror that we identify ourselves by. I used to read scriptures like this and go, oh, I don't quite qualify for that. The righteous are as bold as a lion. Well, that's why I'm not bold. But you see, the Bible says, he was wounded for my transgressions. He was bruised for my iniquities. Iniquities in the Hebrew means crookedness. Everything about me that was crooked, he died to take away. The chastisement of my peace is upon him and by his stripes I'm healed. It's a fourfold atonement, it's glorious. Christ is light and light can have no fellowship with darkness. And we're not supposed to be unequally yoked. Like Brian Simmons says, God wouldn't unequally yoke his son with anything less than perfectly holy. And so if you are joined to Christ as a believer, guess what? It's because he's made you righteous. The Bible says the righteous shall live by faith. It means you've actually got to believe that he's better than you feel like you deserve. First John 3. First John 3.20. For if our heart condemns us, God is greater than our heart. Oh, hooray. <laughs> and knows all things, which means even if I don't feel righteous, aha, I am. Because
because as I confess my sin, he's faithful and just to forgive me, cleanse me from all unrighteousness. If I have a guilty conscience, I ask, is there anything I'm doing I shouldn't be doing? If there is, I don't ignore it. I, I go, yeah, sorry, that was yucky. But then I don't go put myself in the naughty corner for two weeks and disqualify myself. Because if I do that, then what I'm doing is actually trying to pay for what I have no way of paying for. And also shutting down the ability for anybody else to receive Christ. So even if my heart condemns me, even if I don't feel holy, he is greater than my heart. And then the next verse says this, beloved, if our heart does not condemn us, we have confidence toward God. And whatever we ask, we receive from him. Then you read on, you go, because we keep his commandments and do those things that are pleasing in his sight. I'll go, ah, there you go. But read on, he tells us what these commandments are. This is his commandment, that we should believe on the name of his son, Jesus Christ, and love one another as he gave his commandment. In other words, believe that he's better than you feel like you deserve. Receive his love, give it away, and whatever you ask, you'll receive. No catch, that's just it. Like, what lie have you believed that, that, that that's not so exciting? Like, you see, I believe God is raising up a generation that simply believe this. They are as bold as lions. They're gonna be doing the stuff that that you've dreamt of and the Lord says, hey, fix your eyes on the prize and I'm gonna make up for lost time. For your former shame, pain and disgrace, I'm gonna give double recompense. This is the season of the divine acceleration. God wants to get behind you. You know, I used to struggle with it and think, oh, I don't feel very clean. And then one morning I woke up and um, I was just worshiping the Lord as I woke up and then all of a sudden the glory came so strong that I couldn't even move. I felt like, whoa, it's weighty glory on my bed, heavy. And like I never experienced it before. Oh, like, oh. And then, I, like, I, I couldn't even speak. I was in such awe of the presence of God. And then out of my lips, this song started to come. He gave me a song, and I started to sing. I kiss you with clean lips, O oh Lord, lips that you've given to me. I kiss you with clean lips, O oh Lord, because your grace is sufficient for me. And then I couldn't speak again. It's like forced sailor moment. Pause and think about that, Catherine. (laughs) How does it feel not to be ashamed? Not to be guilty anymore? Not to be afraid that you're not enough or not measuring up or maybe it's like, His perfect love casts out fear and His truth is what liberates us as we open our hearts and just believe that He's greater than my feelings, that I will believe His Word and let Him define me. In that place, God will cause you to begin to shine. Arise, shine.